the way that lobsters grow is very different from humans. Humans have our bones on the inside of our bodies that grow slowly as we age. Lobsters, on the other hand, have hard external skeletons called an exoskeleton. When a lobster grows too big for its exoskeleton, it molts or sheds its exoskeleton just like a snake does. The lobster will pop its shell open right where its tail connects to its back and wiggle its way out of the old molt. It has its new, shiny, and slightly bigger exoskeleton underneath. This is a picture of the last time Boris molted. Usually juvenile lobsters molt multiple times in a year, and adult lobsters only once per year. To learn more about molting and for a cool video showing how it works, check out the link in the description below. The home range of the California spiny lobster is from Morro Bay, California, all the way down the Pacific coast to central Mexico. They stay in this range because the water is the perfect temperature for them to spawn and raise little baby lobsters. The diet of these lobsters includes mussels and sea urchins and algae. We feed Boris a mixture of these things at the reef so he feels right at home. In the wild, these lobsters love to hide in caves and crevices in the rocky reef. Here are two adult lobsters in their home. The primary predators that eat California spiny lobsters include the horn shark, the swell shark, the California moray eel, and the California sheephead wrasse. The lobsters use their tails to propel themselves backwards to evade their predators. However, once lobsters get as old and as big as Boris, they have no natural predators. Instead, they are most likely to die from lack of food or disease. California spiny lobsters are also highly valued in restaurants around the world for their delicious taste. How many of you have had lobster before? Lobster fishermen use traps like these ones here to catch lobsters. The cage allows lobsters to crawl in, but not out. The lobster fishery in California is a booming business, but there are restrictions on lobster fishing to make sure lobster populations stay healthy for years to come. The open season when you can catch lobsters is from October to March, but there are catch limits on the number of lobsters you can take, both for commercial fishermen and recreational fishermen. A tool like this lobster gauge is used to make sure the lobster is large enough to take. A fishing permit is also required. That's all for this episode, everybody. To learn more about the California Spiny Lobster, follow the link in the description to the UCSB Steyer Lab. The Steyer Lab is doing some awesome research on the California Spiny Lobster. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new, and make sure to check out Boris the next time you visit the reef. Thank you.